Hello, my name is Barbara Reed. I'm the Wexford Stamper, and today I am continuing my blog series on Valentine boxes. And here is the one we're going to be working on today. If you go to my blog, and that is at wexfordstamper.blogspot.com, you can find all the other posts on all my previous boxes. Today we're going to be working on this pop-up, pull-out, slide-out, I guess, box. And what you do is you use the tab and you slide it out and then you have a little pop-up message inside and then you have all your yummy chocolates. Here I used the Dove heart chocolates. So before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about the suite that we're going to be using. And we're going to be using a suite out of the new January to June 2020 mini catalog that Stampin' Up! has just launched and it is an amazing catalog and if you don't have one of these and you need a demonstrator please message me and I will be glad to send you one. All right let's go ahead inside and I'll show you the suite we're going to be using and it is called the From My Heart Suite and you can see by these samples on this page here the beautiful color scheme they're using. The real red and the flirty flamingo go together so well here is the bundle that we're going to be using. This is the Heartfelt Bundle, and it comes with a stamp set, and this is the stamp set right here called Heartfelt. And then you also get with it these amazing punches. And these, of course, punch out your images from the stamp set. And one is a regular heart, and one is a scalloped heart. So really, really nice to have. And you can use those and just punch out regular um, cardstock and make some really beautiful, beautiful cards. So those are, we're going to be using those. All right, but you can also see it has some fabulous designer series paper, and we're going to be using that to decorate our box as well. We're going to be using the re real red satin ribbon for our little pull on the drawer. And then there's some really cute other items here. They've got some faceted gems, some doilies, of course. You can't make something for Valentine's Day if you don't use doilies. And then these adorable heart foil tins. And those, you can actually bake in those. And I'm going to be making some little cupcakes in those. And I'll hopefully get to show you that soon. But yes, beautiful, beautiful items in this suite. So that's what we're going to be using today. And now, I, what I'd like to do first is do all my stamping, all right? So we're going to we have a heart here on the front, and then we have our pop-up right here on the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and do our stamping first. All right, so let's go ahead and do the little pop-up first. I'm going to be using a stitch circle from the amazing Stitched Shape dies. They have circles, they have ovals, and they also have squares. I actually have those in another pouch, but these are always so nice to have because it gives your circle such a nice finish with the stitches. All right, so what we got to do, first we have to um, bring in our smaller scalloped heart, and then we're going to bring in our so lucky to have a friend like you sentiment. So let's first get out our flirty flamingo. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink up my scalloped heart and I'm going to go ahead and stamp him right in the middle of the circle like that. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and put that away and I'm going to bring out my real red ink and my sentiment and stamp ink that up a bit and that's just going to go flat flat on top of my there we go so lucky to have a friend like you how cute all right so now that is finished all right so that's going to go on the inside okay right like that okay now let's go ahead and make our heart for the front okay now to do that we're going to bring in some of the flirty flamingo paper and we're going to bring in a couple of different stamps for this First, we're going to bring in this stamp that has dots around the edges, and that's going to go on the Flirty Flamingo using the Real Red ink. All right, so let me ink that up, and I'm going to stamp that. Make sure you stamp your heart close to the bottom because that makes it a lot easier to come in with your punch and punch it out, and you won't have to cut away um, paper because you got it too far away. Don't ask how I know that, but I know that you need to do that. 
All right, then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our roses are red, violets are blue sentiment, and we're gonna get him out of here. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put him on this block since we're finished with that other sentiment. And I'm gonna go ahead and stamp again, I'm sorry, in the red. And I'm gonna do my best to get that lined up as best I can. And there it is, roses are red, violets are blue, perfect. Okay, now the next portion of this, we're going to need to use our scalloped. I'm gonna put that over here for now. We're gonna use our scalloped image and we're gonna also use the Flirty Flamingo ink again. Okay, these are really the only two inks that you need to use with this suite. So if you don't have, oops, if you don't have these inks, you wanna make sure that you get them when you're gonna use this ink, this um, suite. All right, so again, I'm gonna make sure that I do it towards the bottom of my paper. And there's the gorgeous scalloped heart. Okay, that is it for the stamping. Now I'm gonna come in with my fabulous punches. Here's the regular heart punch, and I'm just gonna slide my image into the space there and line it up and squeeze. And there's my heart. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my scallop punch, same thing. Line up my scallop and punch. Now how easy is that? That is fun. All right, now before we move on to our construction, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take some of my dimensionals and I'm gonna put them on the back of here and I'm gonna pop this up on top of my scallop heart. And then I'll be totally finished with these two little stamped images. There we go, now they're ready to put on my project. So we're just gonna set them aside for now, and now we're gonna focus a little bit on the construction of the box. All right, the important thing to know is that you're gonna to want to start with a piece of real red cardstock, okay? And that is cut at seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters, okay? And then we're gonna bring in our scoring board. Okay, this is a Simply Score board and you can get this on my online store. It's a great item to have if you like to make 3D um, projects. All right, so now this is a square, so obviously it doesn't really really matter, excuse me, which side you start on, but you're going to be scoring at one and a quarter, two and a half on every side. So I'm just gonna turn it, one and a quarter, two and a half, turn, one and a quarter, two and a half, turn, one and a quarter, two and a half, and that's it. Now I really like this design of the box because it makes the box sides very sturdy. And if we're gonna be pulling this drawer out in and out, we wanna make sure that we don't tear it. So this is a box that has reinforced sides and it's gonna be amazing and it's gonna work so well and be able to hold a lot of candy. Now, before we start cutting, let me show you a template that I made to show you exactly how this um, box is gonna be cut out. I'm gonna move, move my hearts there a little bit. Okay, this is the template that we're going to be making. Notice that these outside pieces are just gonna fold down inside the box to give it some reinforcement. So it's kind of an added piece onto each side, but that's gonna reinforce the box and make it nice and strong so that you can pull that drawer in and out and not have any trouble with it tearing. All right, so let's go ahead and start cutting. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna start on any side and you're going to move in one, two vertical score lines. Okay, can everybody see that? One, two vertical score lines. And then I'm gonna cut up this vertical score line to the second horizontal score line. Okay, then I'm gonna go back to the one closer to the edge and do the same thing. Okay, now. I'm gonna to totally cut off 
this, these two squares on the outside. And then I'm just gonna cut off the bottom one here, and this is gonna be our tab. And I'm gonna go ahead and wedge that tab right there. Okay, and now this end is going to slide inside the box, so I'd like to wedge that a little bit so it'll slide in nicely and neatly. So that's really all you do, but you do that four times. So I'm gonna turn it, okay, on the second from the right, all the way up to the second vertical score, um, second horizontal score line. Same thing here. Then I'm gonna cut this piece off, cut this piece shorter, and I'm gonna wedge that to make that our tab. And then I'm going to wedge in both sides of that piece that's gonna come inside. Turn. Okay, we're on to our third side, same as the first. We're gonna go ahead up to the second score line. Second score line. Cut this section off. Make that a tab. Do a little bit of a wedge there. And then come back to this section and wedge. Okay, and one more time, just for old time's sake. We're gonna go ahead up to the second horizontal score line, second horizontal score line, make a tab, cut that one off, wedge our tab, and then finally we're gonna wedge this last inside panel. So a lot of cutting, but it's kind of the same four times, so it's not terribly confusing. You can always go back and watch it over again, but it's pretty simple once you get the hang of it. All right, so let's go ahead. We'll take this template here, and we're gonna put this box together. Okay, so I'm gonna get my bone folder, and I'm gonna turn over, and I'm gonna start scoring and creasing on all my score lines. Okay, now you can kind of see it coming together and how this second panel is gonna fold inside and make the sides double thickness, which will work well for the side that we're gonna have the little pull on so we don't tear the little pull ribbon through the side of the box. So there we go. Okay, we're all put together. All right, now, we're gonna turn it flat this way. We just scored it all this way and creased it. We're gonna turn it down like that. And we're gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna use Fast Fuse this time. Not Fast Fuse, tear and tape. And I'm gonna put a little piece, kind of diagonally, on each of these tabs. Okay, and then I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna put a piece of tear and tape right through the center of the outside panels because these are gonna fold down inside and then that'll give them a nice amount of adhesive so they can be adhered and stay nice and firm in there. All right, so let's go ahead and get started and putting our box together. Let's turn it back over this way. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take the backing off that paper and I'm gonna fold that down and place it behind the panel. Okay, you're gonna line up the fold and the side of the panel right there. Same thing here. I'm gonna take off, fold it down, slide it behind the panel. Okay, one side done. Same thing on this side. Lots of repetition with this box, but that's a good thing. Then you really get the hang of it quickly. Okay, we're gonna fold it down, fold it behind. And the last one, now you can use regular Tombow glue with this one, and I usually do, but um, today I felt like using some tear and tape. So there we go. So our box is done, and now we have our inside reinforced sides that we need to use. So I'm gonna take the tape, the backing off the tear and tape now, all four panels. This is gonna 
keep those tabs secure because they'll be in between the side of the box and the inside panel. And then it'll also reinforce the side so they'll be nice and strong so you can put tons and tons of candy in here. All right, so let's go ahead and just fold those over and just pinch. Fold over, pinch. And there you have it. Not much to it. Okay, so there's our box. Now while we have our um, box out, let's go ahead and put our um, piece of window sheet on. And this is something I haven't really talked about that much, but this is this fancy um, piece you need to make your little pop-up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the pop-up I mean the window sheet, and I'm gonna, on the bottom section, I'm gonna put a little bit of tear and tape. Okay. Now, before I take the, pa the backing off of it, I'm gonna set it inside my box, right down the middle, and then I'm gonna find the place where it's going to bend and stand straight up in the front, and I'm gonna kinda mark that, okay? Then I'm gonna remove it from the box and I'm gonna kinda give it a nice squeeze, okay? So now I know that this piece can slide in there, okay, and then this will stand up like that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that down now. So you gotta kinda decide which side of your box you want to be the front, okay? So I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay my window sheet. Now the window sheet is, is um, cut at one half inch to five and five inches. I'm sorry, I didn't let you know that. And remember all these dimensions will be on my blog. So you don't have to worry about writing anything down. Okay, so if you can see it, that's a little hard to see on the camera, but now we have this little piece of window sheet that is standing up here. Okay, and while we're at it, I think we'll go ahead and we'll put our little message on there. And that's gonna go right like that. So I'm gonna put a little piece of the tear and tape right at the top of that window sheet piece that's standing up. And I think I pulled the whole thing off instead of leaving on the adhesive. It's a little tricky sometimes with the plastic window sheet. Let's see if I can get can do a better job this time. Take the backing off only. There we go. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna adhere my little message. Okay, so there it is. Now the last thing you need to do is go ahead and put a little piece of tear and tape at the tip of the window sheet strip where it touches the front side of the box. So right here, you're gonna lay a piece there and then you're gonna tear off. And this would be much better to use the tear and tape rather than glue. Glue would be a little more challenging to use. So I'm gonna take the paper off that. And then the front side of that window sheet is now secure. So now it's gonna really pop for you. Everybody see that? Isn't that cute? All right, well, we're doing really well here. All we have to, left to do is the little sleeve that folds over Okay, so let's go ahead and get that done. You're going to need a piece of white, Whisper White cardstock that is cut at two and seven eighths by nine and a half. And I've already scored this. This is scored at one and a quarter, four and an eighth, five and three eighths, and eight and a quarter. And remember, all these dimensions will be on my blog. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and get my bone folder and I'm gonna go ahead and crease all my score lines. Now this is like a little, not a, kind of like a belly band that's gonna cover the entire box so that um, it, but be loose enough that it can easily slide the box in and out, okay? So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna notice that there's two panels that are exact same size as that you put it together, they're gonna just go together right on top of each other. So all you have to do here is on this outside, we're gonna take our tear and tape, and I'm gonna put two strips here because we want this to be nice and secure. 
And then we're gonna just go ahead and fold it over and that will make your lid, slide lid, whatever we wanna call it, for our box. Because we want it to be nice and secure so our pop-up works really well and it doesn't fall apart. So then we're gonna do it. We're gonna just bring the other side over and fold that over onto there. So there we go. Okay, it's like a box without a lid or a, or a bottom. Okay, and that's just gonna slide right onto the box. But before we do that, let's go ahead and do some decorating. We're gonna bring in some panels. Okay, I chose a different color than the other, but the um, designer series paper in this uh, sweet really lets you do that. You can kind of pick whatever you like. All right, so I picked uh, one for the top and two panels for the side. The top one is two and 11 sixteenths by, no wait, that's not right, sorry. Two and 11 sixteenths by two and 11 sixteenths. And the two side panels are two and 11 sixteenths by one and one eighth. Okay, get that right, Barb. All right, now I'm gonna br finally bring in some glue. And I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on the and get these panels nicely placed on here. Now you want to place them when that so that you have the open sides front and back. Okay. And then these go on the sides. And you don't really have a choice which sides because the other two sides are wide open. And you can always put one on the bottom if you like, but I didn't do that with my project. Okay, one more over here. Okay, now we're gonna bring in our heart that we made earlier, and we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put that on just flat with glue. Since we always had used, already used some dimensionals on the top part, I'm just gonna put it on like that. Okay, well, we are getting close to the end here. Okay, the last thing we need to do is make our little pull on the front. And the way I'm gonna do that is, I took a piece of the real red satin ribbon and I made a loop and I tied the loop together at the top just to make a little pull. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and take my punch and I'm gonna punch a hole in the middle of the front of the box and that's gonna you're gonna actually be punching a little bit of the strip on the window sheet and that's okay and I'm gonna go ahead and punch that about in the middle okay and now I'm trying to get it out come on you there we go okay so I have my hole so what I'm gonna do now and I might need a little help with my tool here we'll see how it goes um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take the loop side and I'm gonna try to feed that small little corner through the hole and then pull the whole thing through let's see how we do okay I'm gonna put the corner through with my big fat fingers let's see yep it's there and I'm gonna try and grab it out here Come on, Barb, you can do it. We did it already. Okay, well, let's try the poker. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try to poke some of the ribbon through. Let's see how we did. Okay. This is gonna help me pull it through so I can get a better handle on it. There we go. Okay. So now that's all the way through and our knot is inside, so that's not gonna go anywhere. So get one of those little poke tools, that's a good one. And also the U-Pick um, tool is a great one too. So there we go, that's done. Now let's go ahead and put some candy in there. I got some of the delicious Dove chocolates to put in there like that. And then the way you put it together is you lay your pop-up down and then you just slide it into your lid, okay? Now lid is, is nice and loose so that it makes it pretty easy that you can bring it in and out. So, and here he goes, he's gonna pop right up. Okay, isn't that adorable? 
All right, well, if you have any questions about how to make the box, check out all the information on my blog. If you still have any questions about it, you can always message me or email me. I'd be glad to help. If you need a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd be glad to be that person for you. Just contact me and I'll get you your catalog. And don't forget, now until the end of March, it's celebration. So for every $50 you spend, you can pick one free item out of the celebration brochure. So that it's a great time to stock up on things and a great time to look at some of the great new products that have come out in the mini catalog. So thanks for joining me. And we have a couple more um, blog posts for Valentine's. So check back. You can check on my YouTube channel and on my blog for the tutorials. Take care and have a great day. Bye.